Good morning, Doc Nation. I hope everybody's having a great day. Today, in this video, we're going to talk about Skull Knight. Oh yeah, baby. Uh, Skull Knight is my second favorite class in the game, and the one that I use primarily uh, simply because, you know, as the guild leader of We Are Legend, I typically find myself uh, on the front line in battle, and uh, we, we, we have a lot of battles. Um, why I like Skull Knight? Well, first, let's show you what Skull Knight consists of. Let's get rid of this, because I was leveling some skills, um, off the, uh, off to the side here. So let's get ready, and here we go. So, Skull Knight is Occultism, Defense, and Automancy. Alright, so basically the premise behind Skull Knight is you are a group initiator. You are a frontline tank, uh, specifically designed for group PvP. And the reason I say that, of course, is because with your defense, of course, you know, you get your skills that make you tanky, um, your buffs, the passives are insane for staying, uh, uh, you know, stacked. Um, and then you've got your Oromancy, which not only gives you mobility and a little bit of crowd control with your Vicious Implosion and your Thwart, but, uh, but again, Oromancy does um, help you uh, with the crowd control breaks, making you tanky. Shrug it off, uh, Liberation, very powerful there, as well as Conversion Shield. And then let's not forget about my favorite passive in Oromancy, Absorb Damage, which converts 7% of received damage to health. Now, why Occultism, Doc? Well, that answers... I'm going to answer that right now. <laughs> Occultism has, believe it or not, more group crowd control than witchcraft. With witchcraft, all you really have is the AoE fear and Dehuda's breath, which is the pushback. With occultism, you get uh, Hell Spears, which is an impale or a stun, okay, because it basically freezes everybody in place. Then you get damage bonus from your summoned crows, but you also get stillness which interrupts all enemy casting within 5 meters and inflicts silence for 3.5 seconds. It also removes fear from you. So if you find yourself getting feared or AoE feared, you can pop stillness and it does it's a twofold spell. Not only does it remove all the fear effects from you, but it's also going to interrupt all enemy casting. Now, one skill here that is not to be underestimated is going to be your summon wraith. Summon Wraith is incredibly powerful. It summons a Wraith that deals 715 magic damage per second for a maximum of 9 seconds to all enemies within 7 meters. Inflicts enemies with the Wraith Curse, reducing their move speed, attack speed, and cast speed. So let's talk about my group Skull Knight build. Now first of all, with gear you are going to focus on cloth gear. Yes, that's right, I said it. You are going to wear cloth gear, preferably stone cloth. Now, Doc, why aren't you going lake for your 8.5% magic damage increase? Well, I'm a tank. I'm not worried about damage at all in a group scenario. As a matter of fact, you're going to notice really quickly that I take no single target spells with this. My job is to stack my buffs charge in and begin initiation that is my job so you're going to want to go stone cloth which i'm not wearing but i will have soon uh because the four set it increases your physical defense and the seven set gives you a flat 2.5 percent damage reduction across the board all right that is invaluable as a tank lake doesn't even touch it if you want to go you know now if you're talking about single target 1v1s and you want you know you've got the money to go with a separate set then sure, I guess you can go Lake, but for tanking, I will be going Stone Cloth. Now, that being said, let's talk about my group build here. I've got my bars already set up on the bottom for the group build. You're going to see all the way 7, 8, 9, 0, minus, and equal. I use a Razor Naga, I'm sorry. All of this, all of this are buffs and survivability. And then, of course, 1 through 6 is my crowd control, okay? So, let's explain this. All right, we're going to get our Hell Spears, Summon Crows, Stillness, um, we'll get Summon Wraith. Of course, I get no passives. I am going to get Retribution, and I'll explain that. Uh, over here in Defense, we're going to go ahead and get our Refreshment. We are going to get Toughen, and you better get Revitalizing Cheer. I'll explain that in a second. We're going to get our Imprison, we're going to get our Invincibility, and then we're going to get our Redoubt. Redoubt. Redoubt, actually. <laughs> So let's go ahead and uh, we're also going to get Spry Fortress, finalizing everything with Bear's Vigor. 
We're going to get Thwart, Teleportation, absolutely. Conversion Shield, Vicious Implosion, Shrug It Off, Liberation. All right, we're going to get this, and then we'll get Heartened. So, here is our build for Group PvP. Now, my job as a Skull Knight is to teleport in, thwart first, okay? Thwart first, because with the passive, you're increasing the damage of your Vicious Implosion. So, a lot of people mix that up. You don't Vicious Implosion into thwart. You're going to teleport in on top of the enemy. You're going to pop thwart. You're going to Vicious Implode them, bringing them all in. You're going to go immediately into Hell Spear to freeze everybody. Then you're going to go into Summon Crows. Now, by this time, you might be getting focused on very, very heavily. So, you're going to go ahead and you're going to pop your Invincibility. If you're not getting focused on, then you're going to go immediately from Crows into Summon Wraith and or Stillness. It really doesn't matter. Now, depending on the situation... You can go ahead and teleport in, Vicious Implode, Imprison to keep them there, and then commence with your CCs. Now, I did not mention this, and I apologize, but it should be obvious. Before you charge in, you are going to pop all of your buffs, okay? Really important that you do that before you get crazy. So, what I do is, before I charge in, I'm going to pop 7, 8, 9, and 0. So, what that does is it stops me from being pushed or knocked down it stops me from being shackled or silenced and there's a combo effect here when you pop liberation and redoubt you also get a magic shield that's pretty damn powerful it increases your magic defense by 1960 which is absolutely absurd now i also pop my retribution so if those outrunners or dark right um dark runners excuse me or outriders want to come in and start hitting me with their burst damage they're gonna take a pretty good amount of damage now now if i start getting low on damage and i don't want to go invincible i will pop my shrug it off followed by revitalizing cheer this is an absolutely insane healing spell when you stack your metal because remember you've you've went ahead and you've buffed yourself with your uh toughen okay which is actually really good because you've got bear's vigor and then your refreshment which is not only going to increase your health by 2133 for 30 minutes but it's going to give you it's going to increase the metal as damage is received so once you stack up to close to 3k metal you pop shrug it off Okay, and then you pop Revitalizing Cheer because not only are you going to get a, a, a massive amount of health, but because you've popped Shrug It Off before it, that whatever health you would have gotten, you're going to increase the effect by 50% because you're under the effect of Shrug It Off. So don't worry, you know, I know some of you are thinking, Doc, do you really not take both full Roar, dude? No, no I don't. Just like I don't take Shield Slam or Bull Rush. Everything in this spec is intended for group PvP. Everything. So, you know, with some good pocket healers, you are going to be nigh invincible. All right? Again, you start taking heavy damage. You've got your invincibility. You can teleport out of there if you need to. And then you've got your shrug it off. And you've got your revitalizing cheer. Now, let's talk a little bit about single target 1v1 arenas. Now, Skull Knight is not exactly a 1v1 friendly class. And, well, that's one thing I love about the game. Um, you know, it, it, everything is rock, paper, scissors. You're going to be good at some things. You're going to be bad at others. And that's okay. Skull Knight is no different. So let's switch down to my single target build right down here, as you can see. Now, what is a Skull Knight's main weakness in a 1v1 situation? Well, it's going to be a cloth wearer uh, and, and uh, because, you know, your damage is magic right so if you're going up against a fellow clothy then your magic damage is not going to be as potent secondly anybody with witchcraft is just going to give you a really really hard time that innervate and poopy hand combo is insane right now it needs to be freaking nerfed damn it no but it is insane and then of course with the with the passives and the active skills that witchcraft get the, the their magic damage mitigation uh, is increased even more so it's really really difficult if you go up against a dagger spell that knows what they're doing you are screwed that being said you should not have a very hard time against melee uh, abolishers dark runners 
blighters. Um, you should be able to take them down on equal footing. And what I mean by that is if the gear is the same, if the skill level is similar, you should be able to take them down. Now, if they outgear you by quite a bit, well, <laughs> that burst damage from a Dark Runner is nothing to laugh at. So, let's go through the active skills. Let's go through all the skills here um, with um, uh, Occultism, Defense, and Oromancy. So, let's go ahead and pop this here. And now, as you can see, this is where you're going to take your single target skills. Okay? And I'll explain everything here in just a moment as we pop these bad boys. All right, let's make sure I got everything. And of course, you need um, you need your shrug it off. Uh, we're gonna get our passives. Let's go ahead and get that taken care of down here. And let's get our invincibility. Let's get this. Okay, let's get our vicious implosion. Bada bing. And. Let's see. Let me make sure I have everything here. I think there's another passive I take somewhere. Or maybe not. No, maybe not. Maybe there is no passive. Let's go with... Let me see. Okay, a little off here. No problem. We'll take our liberation. No big deal. No big deal. No big deal. Let's make sure we've got everything we need. we got our shrug it off. We've got our liberation. And we've got our readout. Alright, let's bring that down. Okay, so... Now you can see this right here. This is made for single target. So your mana stars is going to be your filler. All right. Just, you know, what you're spamming with. Your combo here is going to be to, or your, your rotation is going to be to teleport in, vicious implode, hell spears for the stun, crows for the bonus damage, immediately into shield slam for the stun, into bull rush for the knockdown, then, as your metal stacks, you're going to go ahead and pop Shrug It Off, Boastful Roar, which is, oh my god, the damage you get when you pop Shrug It Off and Boastful Roar uh, when you're at 3,000 metal is absolutely insane. Then, after Boastful Roar, because the target is distressed, you are then going to pop Crippling Mire and stun them again with the combo. A lot of people don't know that. Crippling Mire after Boastful Roar actually induces a stun so you're going to want to go ahead and pop that now guess what because you're reducing enemies move speed they are now slowed oh well let's check it let's take a look at olo's hammer well then inflicts an additional 44 percent damage on slowed targets so you go ahead and pop your crippling mire and then jump right into olo's hammer now this is very situational and it's not always going to hit but when it does, it helps out a lot. So, now that's your active, that's your rotation. You are certainly going to go ahead and, especially against Dark Runners or Abolishers, you're going to pop that Retribution, baby. Return 60% of received melee damage to the enemy. Lasts 10 seconds. Does not trigger a global cooldown. And then, of course, you've got your Redoubt, which is going to stop you from being knocked down and pushed. So, you're going to have to play with this a little bit because a smart abolisher or dark runner will you'll see them move away from you when you pop redoubt and retribution they're gonna jump away so you're gonna have to be smart with this and mix this up in arenas um uh, you can try doing it initially on the initial engagement but like i said when you see them move away they you you know why you know they don't want to fuck with you when you've got retribution or redoubt because they know you're just going to go ahead and start your combo wombo on them now, of course, you do have invincibility here. Um, you are going to have a bit of a hard time against primevals and ranged uh, archers. However, if you can get them in an imprison, oh, you're golden. Okay, so that is key, is to, if you're going up against a ranged archer, you want to go ahead and immediately teleport, vicious implode. You want to hell spear to stun them and immediately pop that in prison. To keep them there for a few seconds. Then go into the rest of your combo. Go ahead and hell and, and uh, summon crows. And then you can go ahead and go into your shield slam. Your bull rush. And things like that. You start taking too much damage. Well, you've got your invincibility. Um, and of course, you know the rest of your, uh, uh, your things. And again, you are going to have a hard time against casters. So there is uh, the Skull Knight. Uh, my Skull Knight guide. If... Uh, you know, you have any questions or you have any input, if I made a mistake with anything, 
please let me know in the comments below. As always, I greatly appreciate your subscription here. And uh, you can also check me out live on Twitch at DotGodGame. All the information will be in the description. Good luck, have fun, kick ass, and get laid. And Chunk, we're going to cut right there after that one. Thank you so much.